As we're about to hit the halfway point of South Korean leader Moon Jae-in's single-term presidency, it seems like his dream of establishing peace on the Korean peninsula is being overshadowed by domestic issues and political clashes. So where does that leave inter-Korean ties and the peace process? The situation was summed up by the recent World Cup qualifier between the Koreas and Pyongyang, the first men's football match between the two sides for nearly three decades there. Unlike the relatively high level of inter-Korean cooperation that surrounded last year's Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in the South, no South Korean cheering squad or reporters were allowed to attend this World Cup qualifier, and it wasn't even televised in this country. Plus, the game ended in a goalless stalemate, and that's pretty much where we're at with denuclearization dialogue. After an unprecedented three summits in 2018, direct inter-Korean talks have been largely sidelined this year, with the North seeming to favor discussions with the US, even though they haven't produced peace or denuclearization either. Yet, the South at least hasn't given up. This week, President Moon addressed the National Assembly in Seoul on various issues, including his North Korea-related plans for the second half of his term. And part of that is planning to invest in his vision for a peace economy. Here was some of his assessment. The Korean Peninsula is facing the last hurdle on its way towards permanent peace, the barrier of denuclearization which we must overcome together. Only dialogue can break that barrier. Moon acknowledged Seoul can't go as quickly as we'd like, but he insisted that compared with just two years ago, when the nuclear and missile threat had escalated into war anxieties, the path we must take is clear. And he added, when peace is settled on the Korean peninsula, our economy will receive new opportunities. He highlighted possible projects like connecting railways and roads and boosting economic, cultural and personnel exchanges between the Koreas. But on the other hand, the president is ready for things to go wrong too. He's asking lawmakers to back a record high defense budget, saying strong security is essential to carving our own path instead of leaving our fate in the hands of others. So far, the North isn't showing much to suggest it's ready to help Moon realize his vision though, especially given the nuclear sacrifices required to realize sanctions relief and thereby pave the way for economic cooperation. Indeed, North Korea's rhetoric lately has been more about self-reliance. We even saw North Korean leader Kim Jong-un effectively criticize his father's dependence on South Korea for the former joint operation of tours to the North's Mount Kumgang Resort, as Kim was quoted on Wednesday as ordering the removal of all the unpleasant-looking facilities built by South Korea in the past. But Moon is also unlikely to give up trying. His periods of popularity so far have been pinned to breakthroughs with Pyongyang. The ruling party could benefit from another breakthrough ahead of next spring's parliamentary elections. And what's more, Moon does seem to still genuinely believe in his vision.